how can you find the root problem in a relationship? In this video, I'm going to give you five questions that you can ask yourself, which will help reveal the root of the problem. These five questions can be applied to a specific relationship or just how you approach relationships in general. Hey everybody, I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com, a place where we apply the Bible to your life. This is such an important topic because it's really hard to figure out what's actually going on in relationships, especially when it involves yourself. I think we all have had that experience where we see other people and it's really kind of obvious what the main problem is. You know, maybe this girl has a an issue with committing to certain uh, relationships. She's had multiple guys who seemed like really great Christian guys who would have been excellent husbands, but she just finds it very hard to commit, always bails when things start getting serious. You know that her parents split when she was early. She's had all these wo wounds regarding her parents' divorce. So it's kind of obvious to you, like, eh, it seems like you have some commitment issues based upon your past experience with your parents. For that girl, it's very difficult to deal with that because it's her, you know? We all have this sensitivity towards pain and a coping mechanism is to just avoid the pain by staying away from it. In doing that, we often stay away from the root problem because the closer we get to the root problem, the more pain we feel. So sometimes we have to come at this a little bit uh, different from a different angle. So the first question you should ask yourself if you want to find the root problem in a relationship or in your approach to relationships in general is when do I get defensive? So sometimes people are defensive because they're just kind of struggling with self-esteem or they're just kind of thin-skinned. Oftentimes people get defensive when there's some sort of wound inside of them that's getting triggered by the events that are occurring in their life. So for example, maybe you're a guy and your girlfriend asks you, hey, you know, what did you do yesterday? Um, I didn't see you all day. And you like snap back, I was at the gym, what do you care? You know, and you're like, geez, why did I do that? Why did I snap like that? And you have to figure out what, why am I being defensive in that moment? Because maybe she asks you another question totally unrelated to uh, what you were doing and just says, hey, how was, how was your day yesterday? And she phrases it differently and then you're totally fine. Maybe you had a really controlling mom or dad who was always wondering where you were. Or maybe you cheated before in your past uh, when you weren't walking with God and you haven't forgiven yourself so you feel guilty about it and you think everyone thinks you're a cheater still and you know on and on the the reasons could go but long story short one way to find the root problem in a relationship is to ask yourself when do i get defensive and that question will help you kind of answer the secondary question of like what am i protecting in myself what wound am i trying to protect right now in this situation you know what is getting triggered in me when I get into this certain situation that makes me snap the second question that can be really helpful in discovering the root of the problem is when do dangerous unwanted uh, patterns of behavior happen in my life when do I start acting out and doing bad things that are damaging to myself so for example you know around the holidays a lot of times people overindulge in alcohol or drugs and for some reason it seems like around the holidays that keeps happening why around the holidays do you start you know showing this dangerous type of behavior this unwanted addictive type of behavior or maybe you struggle with pornography or some sort of lust or masturbation or something like that you know when do you start struggling with those things more? You know, is it when you feel disrespected, you go home and you just need to look at porn after that? Or, um, you know, if you get into a fight with your spouse, do you feel like you just have to start drinking? When do you start those addictive behaviors? So when you can start seeing the pattern of behavior in your life and when, what are the triggers that are causing those addiction, addictive behaviors, you'll start seeing the root of the problem a lot easier. Question three, what do you avoid thinking about? 
a lot of times it's very common to have the opposite uh, problem where you're addicted or you're struggling with something and it's causing you to think about it a lot. You know, that's that's also a, a, a way to identify a root problem. What are you thinking about all the time? But something very helpful and maybe less thought about is what do you avoid thinking about all the time? Sometimes the root problem will be revealed when you see that your life is totally patterned around avoiding this certain thing. Maybe you don't like having hard conversations or maybe you don't like uh, going out to social circles and you avoid crowds all the time. What are you constantly trying to avoid? physically and sometimes even more importantly mentally well, what are you not trying to think about is something that really can help you identify a root problem in uh, dr gerald may's book called addiction and grace he says sometimes an aversion addiction is simply an addiction stated in reverse for example if i'm addicted to cleanliness Who's to say whether I'm basically drawn toward neatness or repelled by dirt? So again, if you you know if you have the root problem of like being a neat freak, well maybe the real root problem is that you're afraid of dirt. And obviously we're talking about relationships, so you can apply that principle to relationships. This same thing can be seen in in extreme ways like sexism, racism, you know, uh, genocide. These types of people who, who, who are sinning in those ways are so obsessed with avoiding this the opposite sex or avoiding a certain race or killing off a certain type of people. You can see that the root of their problem is in what they're trying to avoid. Now, obviously, we're talking about something a little bit different here in relationships, but that same principle can be seen. So what are you often trying to avoid and what do you avoid thinking about? When you can answer that question, sometimes that'll help you get to the root of a relationship problem. Number four, what really annoys you about other people or this person that you're dating or in a relationship with? Sometimes what annoys us is a big indicator of the root problem. So for example, if you're someone who just really gets ticked off by prideful people, like you go to a party and some guy finally walks in and he just totally dominates the room and is trying to be the center of attention, and if this just like really irks you, a lot of times the reason for that is because you have pride in you and the pride in you is upset about the pride in that person. Or let's say you get really upset with very opinionated people. Someone walks into the room, they just start blabbing their opinions, start telling you what they think about everything. And when you they leave, you're like, man, that person was so annoying. And then you just spout out all your opinions about this other person. So oftentimes what we don't like about ourselves is sometimes revealed in what we complain about in other people. In Romans 2, 21 through 23, it says, You tell others not to steal, but do you steal? You say it is wrong to commit adultery, but do you commit adultery? You, cond you condemn idolatry, but do you use items stolen from pagan temples? You are so proud of knowing the law, but you dishonor God by breaking the law. So in summary, I think we often condemn in others what we feel guilty about in ourselves. And number five, ask yourself the miracle question. If I woke up tomorrow and everything was better, my life would look like, and then you explain what you are after. So when I was in seminary, I got my master's in pastoral counseling. And we were taught a counseling method called solution-focused counseling. And it's a little bit different than... Uh, clinically based counseling or traditional counseling where you basically start with a diagnosis and then you come up with a solution to the diagnosis. I'm certainly not against that type of counseling or mental health treatment because it has a lot of advantages but in a pastoral setting this was sometimes helpful because you usually have a shorter period of time to deal with an issue. So rather than try and diagnose all the problems, a lot of times you can get to the root of the issue by asking the person, what are you after? What would the end goal look like? And then by identifying what they want, you can then 
identify, well, what's stopping you from getting that? So a lot of times someone could walk into your office and they'll just spill and vomit just everything that's going on in your li their life. You know, maybe you just met this person and they're like, my mom just died last month. I lost my job. You know, I started drinking again and now my girlfriend just left me. She called me right before I came and she wants to break up and, you know, what should I do? And you're just like, look back at them. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. What do you mean? This is, you just told me four huge, really big problems. So rather than me guess what the biggest problem is and just start randomly giving advice, sometimes a helpful solution would be to say, all right, well, let's say you woke up tomorrow and something magical happened and just magically everything was better and you felt better. What would it look like? And whatever they say next can sometimes help you identify what the root problem was. Maybe they would say, well, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be grieving over my mom's death anymore. And say, okay, well, that seems like the biggest problem that led to the other problems. You're still grieving your mom's death. Therefore, you started drinking, you lost your job, you lost your girlfriend. So let's talk about how to overcome that grief. So long story short, if you want to identify a root problem, ask yourself the miracle question. If I woke up tomorrow and everything was better, what would my life look like? Well, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're making videos almost on a daily basis. We're talking a lot about Christian relationships and singleness, and how to glorify God in all the areas of your life. So if you don't want to miss any of the content that we're putting out, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe even hit that little bell next to the subscribe button. So YouTube will give you a little notification every time a new video is ready to watch. Well, thanks so much for watching. God bless.